welcome to ACT and welcome to another sporting edition here and today we have a former Trinidad and Tobago cricketer um, now um, retired and you know we always like to bring back to you from time to time our past heroes or past role models in whatever sport it may be in and today we have a former fast bowler Theodore J. Modest and it's always a pleasure Theodore it's a pleasure and uh, welcome. We uh, more or less we are in your community here for um, it's Williamville, Williamsville. Williamsville, yeah, uh, Williamsville. Right. Tell us briefly, quickly before we get into to, to, to your career about your your your, your community. Um, is it that this your community that you actually were born in, or you, you came here? Well, originally, I'm from not too far from here, about ten minutes drive. I'm mm. called Hard Bargain. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is from here. Mm -hmm. I got married and moved not well not too far from this ground. Mm -hmm. um, last eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you would have played cricket on this ground? Yeah, this is my, I call it my first um, venture in cricket I played on this ground. Mm -hmm. I played a couple of games and I bargained, but it wasn't at a competitive nature. It was just for fun. Mm -hmm. And it came along here where I fell in love with cricket more or less. All right, let's get into the, your, your career as a cricketer. At what age you discovered that uh, cricket was one of the sports that you, you wanted to get into? Um, I started pretty late, uh, 16, 17, really. Mm -hmm. um, I only decided to play cricket, uh, more or less when I saw the opportunity cricket would bring mm -hmm. to me. Uh, it wasn't easy going at, start, at the first, but um, so I never really played hard ball cricket before. You always roadside cricket, mm -hmm. village cricket, wind ball stuff. Not nothing of of competitive nature at that time. Um, when I started at seventeen, I started cricket skipping. Um, so you never had the opportunity to play like cricket at uh, school level. Never. Okay. I probably had the opportunity, but I wasn't. I wasn't looking in that direction at okay. the time. Okay. Um, I came here trying to be a wicket keeper more or less. Mm -hmm. I think I, I made the, the, the team as a wicket keeper and during that session I just started to bowl mm -hmm. and from then I mainly take off really. You are, you are medium, medium fast or a fast, raw fast bowler? Um, <laughs> it depends on how people look at it. I, I, I consider myself a fast at the time mm -hmm. but I never really reached my peak. To be honest. Okay. Okay. Now, um, at 17, okay, you're playing. Um, I guess you join a club. Um, tell us uh, about that. Well, Ghana Sport Club was, well, this is where I'm at now. Ghana Sport Club was uh, on the verge of, from was one level lower than national level. And we were trying to get to that national, national level. We play like Queen's Park, Wanderers, and all that. Um, so, I played here for three or four seasons and then I moved to Wanderers where um, I was already on the national team but I moved to Wanderers to get a better opportunity at, at that level. So you, level. You, you got called up for the national team while at, at Gunners? At Gunners okay. In fact, I played on a 19 level while playing for Gunners mm -hmm. and I think I made a senior team while playing for Gunners. Mm -hmm. now, during your career, I, I, I know um, you, you played for a number of other clubs. You know, tell us about your, 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 your club playing days. I played most of my cricket outside of Trinidad, other than um, Ghana Sports Club and Wanderers Sports Club. My national team, that's the only two clubs I played for at the time while I was on the national team. Mm -hmm. Later on, I played for Petrichin um, in my career. Ali National level was, was coming to Ireland. Mm -hmm. But those are the three clubs I played while I was in Trinidad. Other than that, the rest of the clubs was at more or less England. Oh, okay. I played about four or five clubs in England for eight or nine years. Okay, so you, you, you had the opportunity to play cricket abroad. Yeah. What was that experience like? And the first couple of seasons was, I won't say difficult, it just started more challenging than the rest. Mm -hmm. um, to get to get um, accustomed to, to the new new environment, and it was a little bit a little bit difficult. It was just me. You know, mm -hmm. I had nobody to fall back on to mm -hmm. advice and stuff like that. So the first couple of seasons away, 
it was kind of difficult, but the, the cricket on a whole, I, I enjoyed it and I think I improved from, from that very first season onwards. How did that opportunity, you know, came about to get that contract and who were some of the clubs you played with? Well, when I was on the national team, um, probably that was like two seasons in the national team, maybe the first season, like uh, the, the year is kind of mm. off to me right now, but um, Mr. Derek Murray, uh, he was a, probably an agent at that time. Okay. And he, he, well, more or less put me through to that first club. And from then on, I played about two seasons with that club and then so on. Just, just, just a, a matter of once, once you get across there, mm -hmm. teams will notice you. And well, once, you, once you keep that form, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, more or less, I played um, about four or five different counties just by playing across there. Uh, from the first, first, first club, you play against different teams. Teams just ask you a number, that mm. kind of stuff, and you move on from there. So at that point in time, you didn't have no, you didn't have any agent again. You were doing everything on, my on, own. On, on, on your own. What about when you look back now at the experience playing abroad? You know, how 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 did that how did that help you in your in your career as a as a, as a cricketer? Uh, playing cricket. Cricket is to me cricket. You can play cricket anywhere, anywhere. And once you play uh, at a higher level, mm -hmm. the, the grounds, the people, everybody would be more and more knowledgeable about the game and the atmosphere. They're more different. So it, it, you always try to look for that that higher higher level. To be honest, and to me, I was just searching for a, a, a better. I would say, uh, yeah, I'd say a better um, avenue mm. in, in cricket by, by trying to improve and the, the, the grounds and the teams and the, yeah, the playing on, the, on, on a whole outside. Yeah, it's different. It's different and keep improving because it's challenging knowing that as an overseas, you call it like that, as an overseas, you have, you have to be the one that, that turns up every single game. Mm. And that, 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 that responsibility just made me mature faster as a cricketer. Mm. And I think that, that, that kept me going from on the 19th straight to senior level and keep improving. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about your, your, your playing days with the national team. Um, when did you, or could you remember when you got called up to your first uh, senior um, Senior team. Well, I played on 1998, the year after I was on the national team. Mm -hmm. I was actually on a standby in 98. Mm -hmm. And then the national team was right there, 2099. Mm -hmm. And from there, it was like six or seven years on the national team. Permanent fixture on the national team. Permanent fixture on the national team, but actual playing on the 11 mm -hmm. um, <laughs> is a little bit difficult. Because we had a lot of, of um, at the time, big dogs, you call them. Mm. Who was somebody, yeah. Uh, the because you were there, as, as, you were there um, not as a wicketkeeper anymore, but as, 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 a, a, as a bowler. bowler yeah. So who was somebody, as you say, the big dogs? Uh, there was Mervyn Dillon, mm. there were Marlon Blacks, mm. there was, there were even Mr. Bishop at the time. Yeah, Bishop, playing. yeah, yeah. Um, we had, well, Emirates who's still currently playing. And um, Dwayne Bravo was, was bowling medium pace at the time and well, still is, but mm -hmm. all, all of those were, were, were. So it was a hard challenge to really. Um, yeah, I had to contend with Ravi Ram. Oh, my, yeah, okay. A, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I had to, um, mm. I won't say fight for a place, but the competition to get on, in, on the, the starting mm -hmm. level was, was, was pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Some of the games you could, you could recall playing in. Against like who? That was the, the, the was it the in those days the um wasn't the shell. Well, first was the Buster Cup, I, could, I, I think it was mm. um, the Buster Cup, and then was the Red Stripe. Red Stripe, right? Then was the Carib. Okay. Carib, um, yeah, shell was lot lot way 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 yeah that. yeah. Um, I think I made my debut against the Winwards mm -hmm. at the Oval against um, Stuart Williams. That was a uh, an experience. Um, <laughs> I probably. I would say would like to forget, but it wasn't a good baptism, to be honest. Yeah, okay. Um, but it, it made me stronger, and, and I, 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 ever since I was looking forward to that challenge, in every single game I played, somebody to, to, to make me aware that, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I am at 
I am at this this level. level so and, and, you, yeah, and, and you have to go, uh, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, looking back now, um, at your career, what is there any highlight that uh, you know happened in your career that you can say today? Yes, I am proud of that. And a whole um, coming from my area like this, mm -hmm. where not much sportsmen come true. Definitely. I, I think um, just just to be at that level was was probably one of my greatest kind of accomplishments. And you made the national team not with a recognized or or one of the top um, clubs in Trinidad and Tobago. At that point in time, you were still here at Gunners. I was still here at Gunners. Yeah. So I mean, you had to have you had to be producing something great. To get you know call up on the national team. I, I, I was thankful for, for the selectors who um, picked me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, they saw something that probably everybody else was seeing at the time. But um, I, I think I just like to, to dive into everything I do. Mm -hmm. like dedication is my um, goal mm -hmm. in everything I do. Um, so whether or not uh, uh, I was fighting up against big dogs, I'll keep, keep saying it, mm -hmm. um, I always thought that I had the potential to break through. And it just, it just was a matter of time getting in, but to be honest, I never really got that that run. I would say a run, because I, most games I would just start one and then drop another mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. I wasn't, well, I wasn't consistently on yeah, okay. I, I level, I play any level. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, I'm sure that there are hundreds or even thousands of young cricketers who has never really um, gotten the opportunity to make a national team uh, regardless of how much games you played or what you made a national team you know and there's a lot of sportsmen in trying to bago and around the world who you know have lived their whole life yeah. and it has never happened so i mean that is something that you you have to be you know proud of and, and, and cherish i am i am, I am. um Looking back now at the era when you all were cricketers and looking at what's happening now in the field of cricket, um, are you disappointed? <laughs> um, to, be, to be fair, I'll, I'll say I'm not disappointed, but to me, um, it was a lot harder those times. People have to work mm -hmm. for the players now, nowadays. Most, most people just get the career handed to them now. Mm -hmm. They'll just have a, a, a raw talent or a small talent, small enough talent, and they, they, they reach in places that probably you cannot even see around that time. Mm -hmm. Well, I can have, I can have seen. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't, I won't, I won't be harsh on them. I think a lot of, a lot of youngsters these days, um, they need to work a little more in the game. Or at their game, they they tend to to be a little more loose. Mm -hmm. Cricket terms, I think that they they need to tighten up on everything that they do in cricket and have a little more discipline. A lot of cricketers just um, have a good season and, and think they they're ready for the big stage, which certainly it's it, yeah. it's it not it not practical, mm -hmm. and a lot of them well. Uh, is evidence mm -hmm. in, in most pe most people career nowadays that they reach at the top and, and they, they they have to go back to join board from from probably first game second mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I ask you that question is because the, the young cricketers now who are playing for the under 19s or the, the senior team or whatever, they are the ones that we are looking forward to see represent the West Indies, mm -hmm. right? And we see now that the West Indies definitely are. They, they, they're not, um, I wouldn't say performing, um, it's not what we as the supporters of cricket who used to look at cricket in the days of the, the Richards and the Lloyds and these, these guys, what we are accustomed with. We are accustomed with, you know, yes we win, yes we lose, but we, we are accustomed with good performance, consistency, yeah. Yeah. right? And because you, you, you can, no team or sportsman could ever be always on the top forever. There are changes going to take place, and you know, from time to time, you're going to, yeah. from the, yeah. But what we see now is consistency, not performing well, and losing games. And 
the very said young ones now who we just were referring to are the ones who are supposed to take the cricket to that level. Do you see that happening right now or do you see that there are things that the administrators or whoever they really didn't put in place at an early age so now we are suffering because of that? Yeah, I, I, I would think um, it's a lot to do with the administration. I think um, people are the, who, runs, who runs cricket uh, tend to accept mediocrity, to be honest, nowadays. Mm -hmm. And a lot of youths, a lot of, especially on 19 level, um, they don't put in enough, especially in, in practice uh, in their game. Mm -hmm. I think, to me, it, it boils down to the cricketer, but I think the administration need to have a little more put a little more pressure on them to, to, to perform. Mm -hmm. Not only to perform, but whether they they just gonna go out and um, do throwdowns, let the throwdowns be beneficial to the game rather than mm -hmm. just by the, going through the motion. I think a lot of, of youths now I think we need to um, to put a little more um, Effort. Effort, a little more input mm. into, into their development rather than seeing their talent and, and thinking they would reach far and just throwing them in the fire. Would you say that sports in general is the money has a lot to do with it? Because in the past when you all play cricket or even at the West Indies level, right? There was no set of money for, for, for cricketers as what we've seen in, in, in cricket now. Yeah. Right? We've seen a lot of huge salaries, you know, for, for players, but we're not seeing that huge improvement. Yeah. Would you say that money now has brought um, sport into a point where it's more about the money than actually the passion of the game? Um I, I could agree with you, um to the extent that uh, it, it's it's a lot more. Um, it's more of a, a job mm -hmm. to be a cricketer now yeah. than, than okay. passion yeah, or, yeah. or just for love, just to see if you reach far. But it's more of a job, so people tend to think, even though I out on the field and I don't perform, I still get paid. Yeah. And I think that t yes, it, it, it would. It would clear to your mindset would be a det detriment to your, to your career but uh, at the end of the day is a livelihood uh, but people have um, the cricketers that is mm -hmm. have to take it a little more serious and, and work harder at the game so I, I would think that money is an issue it, it was never like that in our, age, in our days because of our salary I, I can't recall the figures but it's probably like 20% compared to what it is now. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking back at your career, any regrets? Um, regrets, a lot of regrets. Um, not using the opportunity I, I did get. Mm -hmm. I think that as a cricketer, you, you train and you work hard and, 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 and the pressure of, of, of performing gets you on the field mm -hmm. at the time. It, it, to me, I, I think I had enough opportunity. I'm not blaming anybody for my short career, mm. but um, a lot of games I could have done better. I think my figures will show that I could have done better. And uh, regrets is just, it, to be honest, failure is part of being successful, to be honest. Certainly. But, um, yeah. I, I don't think I got the opportunity to. to, to harness my skill early mm. in my days to, to, to mm. be a successful cricketer now. Just to me, I, right now, I, I would tell anybody, I, 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 I'm just average, I was an average cricketer mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think that starting late, when I mean starting late at age 17, it had a lot to do with it? Maybe if you had started the game at a younger age, maybe going through like the colleges league and, and, and that playing, um, it, it may have been different. Mm, that too, yeah, that too is a regret, starting mm. late. Um, but my mind was there, my heart was there, so mm. I wouldn't use that like, an like, excuse, but starting at 17, you always have somebody who more recognized than you. Yes, yeah. So yeah. that was always a, 
uh, feather in their cap. Mm, mm. But to me, I, I never really look at it like that at the time. I think I, I wanted to, to succeed and just training hard and, and trying to do my best. I thought that would be good enough. Mm, but mm. this no, wasn't. Now, with all that you've said here this evening, um, and you've realized that what you could have do, done and what you didn't do, Given the opportunity now to talk to a, a young person who is interested in playing cricket, or even say not necessarily playing cricket, but getting into a sport, right? What advice would you give to that person? Well, the goal is always to succeed in sport, whatever sport you're in. And I think you have to be persistent and patient at the same time. And be dedicated to the whatever you do at the time. Whether it's just going for a, a run, make sure your run is, is, is hard and, and, and towards going towards your goal of, of being a, a good sportsman, a good cricketer. Um, I think my advice to them would be um, just, just keep working hard and, and always look for that, always take that opportunity as, as, as soon as it comes to you. Don't, yeah. don't wait and say, tomorrow you'll do better or something like that. As soon as you get the opportunity, mm -hmm. take it. It was a pleasure, Tedo, having a short interview, but we, we, we covered most of what you, you have wanted to say. Um, you started here at this very set ground and a fitting place for us to conduct this, this interview. We want to wish you all the best. And um, what I said before is that a lot of people try to make a uh, national team in, in various sporting activities. Some do it for years and never make it. But you made it, it might be short, but um, you made a national team and as you did your best, right? And we, what I try to do is to appreciate the little that one does for Trinidad and Tobago. Because it's not everybody's gonna be the Brand Lara or the Coatley Arrows. But once you make a national team and you contribute to society, it's important. So we want to say thank you very much. And I don't know if there's any last closing comments you would like to share with us. Um, well, to go back to your question, um, to, to, to the youth or to the expiring sportsman, I lost a friend playing cricket. Um, my best friend, um, his name was Razi December. The ground's name after him to be if you the um, back there, uh, he died in a match while I was in England, which was really, really hard for me. And you just doesn't know, you don't know what could happen to you. So once you you in something, be in it, and always strive to be better in life and in sport. That's that's my that's just me. Thanks again. Uh, my pleasure. Well, there you heard it from Theodore Mothers, former Trent Tobago fast bowler. And as I said before, it doesn't matter how many games you play or how short your, or how long your career is. Once you represent your country and you give back something to society, you have done a great justice to the country. And that is why we are here to highlight these unseen or unsung heroes, as we call them. But we, again, we want to thank Theodore for giving us this opportunity. And we hope that some little part of this interview, some little part of this me message, will touch the hearts of some young sportsman or woman out there. Hence the reason why we continue to go from community to community, highlighting those from the various community. We in Villa Williamsville, we took the opportunity to come to his hometown, at Gunners Ground, and we want to wish you all a blessed week ahead, and we will see you soon. Mm -hmm.